welcome to Siska Stitches. In today's video, I'll be showing us how to create this beautiful pencil dress with ruffle flounce on the skirt side. You can see how pretty it looks. So that is what we are going to be going for. So if you're new to my channel, you're welcome. Kindly click the subscribe button and click the bell so you get updates when I post new videos. And now let us, you know, get right into the tutorial. So first, we have some lines drawn out here. I'm going to explain what they are okay so right here is my top line representing my shoulder right here is my shoulder to arm hole measurements divided by two so we're going to use this as a guide to draw our arm hole and what i have here is nine inches and if it's on this line i like to take my bust measurement and then i have from my shoulder to my waist which is 16 inches so this is what we're going to be using so for this tutorial we do not need our bust point measurement because i'm not going to be adding that to this um, pattern now if you want to go ahead to add that by all means please do that the reason why i'm not adding that is because the fabric that i'm going to use for this tutorial is very stretchy as you can see so what i'm going to do right now is to mark my shoulder measurement on this line my shoulder measurement is 16 16 divided by 2 is 8 so i'm going to come right here and mark 8 inches right at my shoulder line so after marking 8 inches here, I'll come right here and do the same thing, mark 8 inches and I'm going to go on to draw a straight line across. What I'm going to do next is to mark my neck width of 4 inches. So I'll be going with 4 inches because I don't want the neck to be too open while making a wrap dress, okay? So right here is 4 inches, then I'll come right at this armhole part and mark 1 inch downwards for my shoulder slope and I'll come right here and join the points. So we are drafting the back pattern first, even though I have my pattern paper folded into two, we are going to be adding a zipper to this pattern. The reason why I have it folded into two like this is because we are still going to use this to draft the front. So after marking my shoulder slope, I'm going to come right here and mark my neckline. I'm going with a neck depth of one inch for this back pattern and I'll go on to connect it to my shoulder slope with a curve just like this. So what I'm going to do next is to come right at my at this line which i'm going to take as my bust so my bust circumference is 38 38 divided by 4 is 9.5 so i'm going to come right here and mark that 9.5 then what i'm going to do next is to just create a curve to this line here in order for us to have our ample curve now what i'm going to do next is to come to my waist area mark my waist circumference divided by 4 my waist circumference is 34 34 divided by 4 is 8 and a half inches so after marking that, remember I said we are not adding that, okay? So after marking this now, I'm going to come right here, join waist to my bust. And now we have our back pattern drafted. All I need to do is to go on to cut this out following the markings that I have here. We're going to be adding seam allowance on our fabric. So do not worry. I'll be adding seam allowance of 0.5 inches all around with the exception of my zipper so let me just cut this out now after cutting out my back pattern this is what we have now what i'm going to do next is to use this to cut my front pattern i'm going to just get my paper just ignore the way the paper is that is not straight we're still going to make use of it as is and then i just open up my back pattern like this okay so what i'm going to do right now is to pin down this back pattern on top of our new pattern paper is very very important so that we do not make any mistakes whatsoever what i'm going to do next is to mark a few points okay so i'm going to mark my the beginning of my neckline which is right here okay so what i'm going to do is just trace out the shoulder trace out the armhole here so we're just going to do this on one side of our pattern. So I trace out the armhole and I'm going to trace out this side seam. So after tracing out the shoulder, the armhole, the side seam, I'm just going to come right at the bottom. Just do a small trace here and a small trace here. We're going to connect that point later. Come right here and do the same thing here. Okay, so can you see what I did here? what i'm going to do next is to get rid of my back pattern this is what we have at the end of the day now i'm going to join the bottom so that i can have a straight line here so i'm going to come to this part now and determine how 
high I want this part to be. Now, the length of this part will determine how open your neckline will be. If you are going with one inch, you are going to have to slope from your neckline all the way to that one inch and it is going to make your neckline sort of like a bit open so i want mine to be closed such that i would not need to use a brooch on this wrap dress so i'll be going with three and a half inches or equally four inches so let's go with four inches so here is four inches and this will be going into the side seam all right and what i'm going to do next is to create a curve from the neckline here up until this four inch that we've marked here. So what I'm going to do next to connect this is to just use my pencil to sort of like create how I want the neckline to be curved, okay? I like to use a pencil first so that I see what I'm working with, okay? So a pencil just gives me like a guide and once I'm satisfied with what I have, I'm just going to fine tune it with my marker pen. So now that we have done this, the next thing I'm going to do is to come to my armhole. We are going to work on the armhole, okay? So this is where our armhole ended. So we should be having about eight inches. Okay, so I'm just going to mark four inch. That's the midpoint. Come in there by half an inch. And we're going to create a new armhole by joining this point here to this half an inch here. Okay, so just like this, because this is the front of the of the pattern. If you have a French curve, go ahead and use that. So guys, this is what we have for our pattern, and I'm going to cut this out following the front armhole, following all the markings that I have made on this pattern paper. So now that we have my pattern all cut out, this is what the front looks like. Okay, and this is what the back looks like. I divided the back into two because we don't need the other half. We'll need to indicate on our pattern that we are going to be adding a zipper allowance of one inch. Our neckline will have 0 0.5 inches, shoulder slope 0 0.5 inches, armhole 0 0.5, our side seam 0 0.5, as well as the half length 0 0.5. Now, the same thing we go for the shoulder slope here, the armhole, the side seam, the bottom here, as well as the end of the wrap for the front. But I'm not going to be adding seam allowance at this part here, okay? Because I'm going to be using bias tape to turn it, and bias tape takes less than a quarter of an inch to turn, so there is no point just adding any seam allowance here. All right, the rest of the parts of the front pattern will go on to have a uh, half an inch similar one. So now that, you know, I've explained all of this, I would go on to cut this out on my fabric. So I've cut my back pattern on fabric. I've cut it to have a half an inch similar ones all around the pattern with the exception of the zipper area, which has one inch for similar ones. So there's something that I did right at the waist area. I cut off half an inch at the zipper allowance area because I want it to slant towards my waist. This actually helps to remove zip bulge. So let me just explain what I did. So this is the part that I cut out, okay? I marked half an inch and connected it all the way to the edge. So that is why you have it wider here at the part that I cut out and thinner here towards the edge. So just mark half an inch at your waist, connect it straight up to the edge of the pattern. So now that I've explained this to us, I'm going to grab my front pattern. So this um, fabric doesn't have that. The fabric is a pattern um, lycra, has a lot of stretch. That is why I'm not adding that to this, so that it doesn't pucker after sewing. I'll just leave it like that and sew it up. So the next thing I'm going to do is to draft the skirt pattern. And the reason I'm drafting the skirt pattern on paper instead of, you know, on the fabric is because of the way the fabric stretches. I don't want to have an issue with feet at the end of the day, okay? So that's why I want to draft a pattern for the skirt parts. So right here is my pattern paper, okay? I have some lines drawn out here. This edge of the pattern paper is representing both center front and center back. So we're going to be using the same pattern to cut the front and the back. So what I've done right here is to mark my waist to hip. My waist to hip is eight inches, and that is exactly what we have here. And then my waist to the length of the skirt part, which is 22 inches. So I'm going with a 38 inch um, dress length. 
my body is measuring 16 inches so 38 minus 16 that is 22 inches and that is exactly what we have here now the next thing i'm going to do is to come from the center front so we're going to be drafting out the front pattern my waist is 34 inches we're going to divide that by four and that will give us eight and a half so i'm going to come right here and mark that eight and a half inches okay then i'll come right here my hip is 43 inches 43 divided by 4, that is 11.25, and I will mark that right here. Now, if we measure what we have here, that is 11.25. We're going to subtract 1.5 inches from 11.25, and that will give us 9.75. This is such that we'll be able to shape out our sketch into a pencil form. So 11.25 minus 1.5, that is 9.75. Now what I'm going to do next is to connect the bottom to the hip and then connect the hip to the waist right here. So after connecting the points, this is what I have. The next I'm going to do is to shape out our skirt. Your hip is not pointed, okay? So what you want to do is to just get a curved ruler and just go on to shape this out. And this is what I have for the hip area. So remember that my body's pattern, I cut off half an inch at the waist area to be able to you know, help me remove zip bulge. I'm going to do the same thing for the skirt part. So I'll come right here, mark half an inch, connect it all the way to my hip. Okay, this would not affect the measurement at the end of the day because my fabric has a lot of stretch. This half an inch that I marked here is for the back pattern, okay? So I'm going to cut out my pattern now, but I'm not going to touch this part until I've cut out the front pattern on fabric. So I'm going to indicate for my center back that I am adding a one inch zipper allowance so that when I'm cutting out the back pattern, I'll be able to factor that in. We'll be cutting the front pattern on fold and we'll be cutting the back pattern open, making sure to add a one inch zipper allowance. So I'll cut this out now. So after cutting out the pattern, this is what it looks like. Make sure to indicate your seam allowances. For me, I'll be adding a one inch seam allowance at the bottom of the skirt pattern. The side seam area will go with 0 0.5 inches and the waist area will go with a half an inch seam allowance. So I'll just go ahead and use this to cut my fabric out, making sure that I cut the front pattern on fold and before I cut the back, I'm going to cut this slant right here and cut the back pattern, making sure I add a one inch zipper allowance to it. So after cutting out the skirt pattern on fabric, this is what I have. So I've cut out the front pattern first. Okay, and right here is my back pattern with a one inch zipper allowance at this part, half an inch seam allowance at the side seam, one inch seam allowance at the bottom of the skirt so what i want to do now is to couple the front pieces together before coming to do the skirt parts so what i've done next is to place my front pattern on top of the back pattern as you can see here and i'll go on to sew the shoulder seam by a half an inch seam allowance so after sewing the shoulder seams of both front and back this is what i have this is one half and this is the second half if you remember the pattern that we drafted for the front bodies we did not add seam allowance to the neckline but i added seam allowance at the back which was a mistake so i'm going to go on to cut the back neckline out remove that half an inch okay because i actually do not need it so i'll go on to remove it that is why after sewing i had a bit of excess on this side so after cutting it off, this is what I have. I'll repeat the same thing for the second half. And what I'm going to do next is to grab my bias tape. I'll use it to turn the neckline. I place right side of my bias tape just like this, as you can see me doing. So there's about a quarter inch here. I'm going to place it on it like this and take it to my sewing machine and sew from the back neckline, come down to the front neckline, the wrap area. And after doing that, I'm going to flip it inside and then stitch at the edge of the bias tape right here. Now you want to make sure that when sewing, you do not stretch your fabric. Because if you stretch your fabric, after you sew, this place is going to ripple. It's going to look actually stretched out. So don't stretch your fabric while attaching the bias tape to it. So whatever I do for this one, I'm going to repeat for the second half.
After using the bias tape on the neckline and the wrap part, this is what we have. Okay, I love how this came out. So what I've done is to place the front on top of each other like this, such that it overlaps. Remember that it's a sort of like a wrap dress that we are making in front. And I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and sew the bottom here by a quarter of an inch to hold the two pieces together. So after sewing this part of the front bodice, what I'm going to do next is to place the front skirt pattern on top of the front part of the bodice with right sides touching and I'll go on to sew the two pieces together by a half an inch similar ones to hold it in place. Okay, and what I'm going to do next is to repeat the same thing for the back. So right here is one half of my back pattern. I'm going to get the one half of the skirt pattern that matches that part of the bodice. And what I'm going to do is to place the skirt part on top of it, the, that's the back bodies with right sides touching. And I'll take this to my sewing machine and sew by a half an inch similar ones. And what I do for this part, this one half of the back pattern, I'm going to repeat the same thing for the second half. After sewing the bodies front and back to the skirt pieces respectively, this is what I have. What I'm going to do next is to grab the belt pieces that I've cut out. I cut it to a width of 5 inches and the length is 50 inches. So when I fold it into two like this, I should be having 2.5 inches. So what I'm going to do to the belt piece after folding it like this is to sew by a half an inch along the length of the belt. And once I do that, I'll open it up like this and then stitch this side down by half an inch. Now, after sewing my belt pieces together, this is what I have. All I need to do is to go on to turn this right side out and I'll attempt to press it to see if it is going to lay nice and flat. So I'll just go on to turn it right sides out. So what I want to do right now is to go on to sew the side seam. So I've pinned the front to the back and what I'm going to do next is to insert the belt in between the seam joining the bodice and the skirt okay so i'm going to place it like this making sure that where i have the seam on the belt piece is going to face the back bodice so i place it in like this okay and i'm going to pin that down i'll repeat the same thing for the other side as well now what i'm going to do is to sew this part by three quarter inches even though i gave a half an inch similar ones to my pattern i'll be sewing by three quarter inches because this fabric is stretchy and i want it to stay well on my body so that is why i'm going to sew by three quarter inches at the side seam from top to bottom and then i'm going to show us what we are going to do next so after sewing the side seam okay and attaching our belt piece there's one thing i want to do before i would decide to attach my zipper i will go on to sew the center back from top to bottom with a one inch seam allowance and then i'm going to test the fit of this dress to see whether i actually need a zipper or not if i do not need a zipper that would be awesome so i actually want to do that because of the stretch that this fabric has if you can accommodate my body without me having to attach a zipper in fact it would be so awesome if i do not need to attach a zipper but if you are working with a non-stretch fabric you do not have that luxury please go on to attach a zipper to your dress so i'll just do what i've explained now and see if i will need to attach a zipper or not so after sewing my zipper allowance by one inch okay i did not add zip like i explained i just sewed one inch all the way down i tested the dress to see if i was going to enter it without struggling and it was easy peasy because of the stretch that the fabric has and like i said if a fabric does not have stretch Okay, I'm working with Lycra here. If your fabric does not have stretch, please insert a zipper to avoid stories that touch. Okay, so after doing that and testing it, I realized that I needed to take some extra allowance around my hip area, which is what I did here. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just reduce the fabric that I have here so that it is not um, looking kind of bulky around my side seam so i'll just go on to trim that off a bit and what we're going to do next is to go on to cut the sleeves so we are practically um almost done so here is the pattern for my sleeves this is the paper i'm going to explain all the markings that you can see here so from here to here 
from this point to this point, we, this place is my shoulder. I'm marking a caps height of five and a half inches, the standard uh, caps height that I work with. Then the length of the sleeve is going to be 20 inches, which is roughly um, around a three quarter length sleeve. And what I've done here was to mark my bicep circumference. Now for this sleeve, I'm going with a bicep circumference of 14. So 14 divided by two is seven inches, which I marked here, I marked here, and I marked at the bottom of my sleeve. Then I drew a straight line upward. So what I'm going to do next is to create the sleeve head for our sleeve. The first thing I'm going to do is to draw a diagonal line from the shoulder to this point here. So just like this. And then I'm going to divide that diagonal line into two. If I measure this, I have 8.75 inches. So I'm going to fold my tape rule into two just to make that easy for us. And whatever I have on the folded end of my tape rule, I'm going to place like this and mark that point on the diagonal line. At this point that I marked, I'll come up by half an inch, just like this. Now, this midpoint that we have marked, we are going to fold the tape rule again into two at that point, okay? And then I'm going to place it at the second half of the diagonal line and mark. Now, at this point, I'm going to come down by a quarter of an inch. Okay, so this is what I have right here. The next thing I'm going to do is to come right at the shoulder area, the shoulder line. I'm going to mark one inch. Now, what we are going to do at this point is to create the sleeve curve for our sleeve so just like this so you can go on to use a curved ruler to join the points okay so i just curve it out like this bring this down and then curve it all the way to this point so just make sure to curve it really well so after curving it out this is what I have and what I'm going to do next is to add a half an inch similar ones right here and I'll be adding three quarter inches at the side seam of the sleeve so after adding my similar ones this is what I have and I added one and a half inch at the bottom of the sleeve because I'm going to be creating a casing for elastic at the bottom of this sleeve all right so that is why I added one and a half inch and what I'm going to do next is to go on to cut my sleeve following the similar ones that we have here. I've also gone on to indicate that my sleeve will be cut on fold. That is very, very important. And once I cut out my pattern, I will use it to cut my sleeve on fabric. So I just want to quickly mention something that before you go ahead and cut out your sleeve head or add allowances, please make sure that you measure your round armhole on your dress. Make sure to measure it and make sure that it corresponds to what you have around your sleeve head if it doesn't correspond you need to make adjustments when necessary by either elongating your armhole or elongating your sleeve head do you understand in order for both of them to accommodate each other so after cutting my sleeves on fabric i'm going to take this to my sewing machine and sew down by my seam allowance which is three quarter inches and what i'm going to do is to go on to hem my sleeve in such a way that a three quarter inch elastic can actually fit into that hem space that we are going to you know sew so that's what i'm going to do for my two sleeves and of course you need to leave an opening at the hem so that you'll be able to insert your elastic right through it so after sewing the side seam of the sleeve i went on to hem it like i explained and this is the opening for us to insert the elastic so i cut my elastic to around the circumference of my wrist area so that it will be tight at this point and what i'm going to do is to pass my safety pin through the elastic like this and we are going to insert the safety pin to guide our elastic through the fabric until we get to the other side and once we have it right at this end i'm going to pull the safety pin through making sure that the elastic on this end doesn't go in if it goes in, we'll have to start this all over again. So I'm going to remove my safety pin and then I'll take this to my sewing machine and sew it down by a quarter inch. So after sewing the elastic, okay, I'm going to pull it through on the inside and then I'll go on to sew this part short. 
what I'm going to do next is to place my sleeve with right sides touching the dress. I'm going to place the center of the sleeve into the dress like this and make sure to match that center to the shoulder seam that we have here and match the seam on the sleeve on the inside to the side seam. So what I'm going to do at this point is to go on to show everything around by a half an inch seam allowance and then repeat the same thing for the other sleeve. Now, the next thing that we are going to work on is to cut that ruffle flounce and how to attach it to this dress that we are making. So after sewing on my dress, this is what we have. The next thing we want to do is to attach the ruffle flounce to this dress. Now, we want to take note of where and how we are going to be attaching this. Okay, so I'll be attaching it starting from the side seam. Okay, it is going to come down like this. So can you see how my hand is going? So it's going to come down like this. Okay, all the way to the other side seam. And the same way I marked it in front is the same way I'm going to mark it at the back. But what I'm going to do right now is to use a pencil to create where I'm going to attach the ruffle flounce. So I'm just going to sketch out where I'm going to be sewing the ruffle flounce to. Okay. So just sketch it out like this. And after I'm done sketching it out, I'm going to measure what I have right there okay so i'll just go on to measure it and i have about 31 inches now what i'm going to do is to use pins to hold both the front and back skirts pattern together so i'm going to use the pins as a guide at the back to trace out the back uh, markings as well okay so just go ahead and do that and trace it out so i measured this to have 31 inches i'm going to cut a fabric length to about two and a half times that and i've gone ahead to do that this is what we have here okay this is it i had to join pieces of fabric together to have that length and i went on to use a bias tape to turn the end because of the way i cut the fabric if i should hem it with the fabric it will be twisting towards the main fabric to be curling towards the um, pattern part so i decided to use bias tape in order to have the edge relaxed now what i've also done was to run a gathered stitch or basting stitch on the fabric and i'm going to pull the stitch and gather this fabric to 62 inches remember that i measured the front part to be 31 inches it means it's going to be the same for the back so i'm going to go on to gather the fabric to 62 inches before taking it to my sewing machine to sew it up so guys after gathering this is what i have i've pinned one end to the waist in front here and i'm going to take this to my sewing machine so you can see the direction that i placed it on the fabric such that the flounce will be falling towards the side seam after sewing okay so i place it like this by the time we sew it is going to come like this so what i'm going to do now is use the line that i marked on the fabric as a guide and i'll take this to my sewing machine and stitch it down all the way from side seam to side seam here and i'll repeat the same thing with the remaining part of the flounce fabric at the back as well and then i'll come show you guys the final look of the dress so here is the final look of the dress i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did kindly give us a thumbs up subscribe to my channel turn on the bell so you get updates when i post new videos and i'll be seeing you in my next tutorial bye